Any fears for the next little bit? Uh, no, not until we get to Red Bay. And that's where the gravel starts. And I, I just read a, a ride report from a guy who went up there, and he had a couple of real bad scares. So, of just wipeouts and stuff, or yeah, it's like the the gravel's real marbly. Um, so he, he a couple times he lost control. It was. So this is what, hump day? Wednesday? We're headed to the big land today. The big land. Day four was shaping up to be wet, cold, and windy. It was 11 degrees outside with the temp forecasted to plummet towards freezing, mixed with 60 km an hour wind and rain. We said our goodbyes to our fantastic hosts, Carl and Liz, who treated us like royalty, and we ventured out into what was shaping up to be a nor'easter. Pete went off in search of waterproof gloves, and I headed up to the Fishing Point Cemetery to see some of my long-lost relatives from Dad's side of the family. Grenfell Regional Health Services is headquartered in St. Anthony, and was started by Sir Wilfred Grenfell when he arrived from England in 1892 and is now a historical figure in northern Newfoundland and Labrador. Pete's getting his dish uh, washing gloves on because he had neglected to buy waterproof gloves before he left because somehow he thought I told him it was going to be sunny and dry the whole trip. On route to the ferry in St. Barb, we stopped in Raleigh, which is formerly known as Ha Ha Bay. It's the birthplace of my mother and the Elliott clan. While warming up with a coffee at the Burnt Cape Cafe, I met a fifth cousin of mine and her husband, who happened to be the owners. Washing gloves. Well, about 25, 30 knots, and we have to cross the streets on a ferry today. Look at that. Where are we? We are in St. Barb. Yeah, ready to catch. Doing? Well, we're getting ready to catch. Taking <laughs> some cold you're shaking. <laughs> we're getting ready to take the ferry over to the big land. Over to Labrador. Here we are. While waiting for the ferry to blossom ball, we met two other riders. Oliver's from Germany now living in Toronto. And he just happened to be on the same route as Peter and I. And Daryl, who rode all the way up from Florida, and despite the cool August weather, still had a smile on his face. <laughs> We're good. We had a very good meal, uh, lobster clubs, good meal. Yeah, really and good. homemade fries, I'd say. Uh, yeah, they didn't come out of a bag. No. They weren't Cavendish fries. They were not. But Terry may be flying up here at some point to do a deal with, a, with them. Uh, and so we're happy about the food, we're happy about the company, and oh, we're great happy. Great company. Great bunch of guys. Yeah. It's awesome. We got our, our new partner on this uh, ride, Oliver. Yes. From Germany. And we're going to see... Uh, our new friend, uh, Daryl, off tomorrow. Yeah, he's heading back to Florida. And then we met another friend, uh, 
Francois Tenet who just came down through the path. So he was so. a wealth of knowledge on the road and yeah. conditioned and all that. Here are my rain, Icon rain boots. Rain, R-E-I-G-N. It says right there, waterproof. Well, they've been soaked since I got put them on my feet. Um, since the first little bit of rain. So now, but what we found that really works well is the 10 pound fish bags, uh, circa, sort of like you do when you were in grade two and you got a soaker. Anyway, Terry's got a set going as well. You can see it's very high tech. My seven year old Joe Rocket Boots have uh, reached the limits of their rain repellency. So, we're going old school. Back to plastic bags in the boots. We woke up to a beautiful morning which was a welcome sight after yesterday. We geared up for our first day of riding with Oliver and headed out over the last remaining stretches of asphalt before hitting the gravel in Red Bay. Daryl was headed back to Newfoundland on the ferry and southbound for warmer weather. And Francois was waiting to catch the boat to uh, Natasquan to continue his journey back home towards Montreal. Almost a year of planning since this trip came together. We finally made it. And here we are. And uh, it's a stellar day. And we're our new cool. friend Oliver. And our new friend Oliver from Germany. He's going to accompany us through the uh, big land. Perfect. So we're finally in the big land, crossed over from Quebec this morning. Big drive, it was about two miles. And uh, currently we're in. Uh, Point of more. And that there is the uh, tallest lighthouse in Newfoundland and Labrador. And as you can see, it's a absolutely stunning day. Much better than yesterday. It's not exactly it's a, right. It's a cool start, about delicious. one degree this morning, but now it's, uh, it's warming up nicely and the uh, boats are starting to come out. Wrap your arms around me and kiss me on the back while I do the dishes. Scrub the magic lamp, you appear translucently to grant me wishes. Dan, we're barely, we're barely out of Quebec and in the Labrador and we've been stopped for, I don't know how many times. It's, uh, it's too beautiful, everywhere you go there's something to look at. And this is the, uh, point of more, uh, beach. It's a great beach day today. Uh, there's not a lot of people around though. The surf's pretty low. But what a truly spectacular place. Incredible. Just incredible. We are uh, very fortunate to be here on a day like this. We stopped at the Pinoir River Bridge where we met a couple from Boston on a Triumph Bonneville. They ran into sleet and snow the previous day en route to Red Bay.
Okay, this would be Red Bay, the old Basque whaling station in here. Check behind. I'll get out of the way. Cheese switch. Cheese switch. Oh, we're getting loose. Yeah, yeah. There you there go. go. Yeah. We got it. Have a good one. Bigger, is it? This is the start of the gravel part of the Trans Labrador Highway in Red Bay. And there you got 79 kilometers to Mary's Harbor. And apparently, this is the worst section of road, so it's going to be over an hour and a half of ride. Anyway, this uh, should be an interesting drive. Five hundred kilometers of this. And behind us is Red Bay. And uh, I've secured us accommodations in uh, Port Hope Simpson tonight. We're going to be staying at the Campbell's B and B. So. Uh, Next stop, Mary's Harbor. All right, here we are in uh, on the way to Port Hope Simpson, and as you can see, we're on the Trans Labrador, the real deal now with gravel roads and. Not much else. Anyway, it's a pretty sweet riding. We're doing between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. And uh, so far, so good. Not sure what it is about Frenchmen and bicycles, but we ran into this guy on the way to Port Hope. He's from Montreal and has taken the long way home. That's always neat when you get like that nice pavement. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So today is the big day, 400 kilometers of gravel all the way to Goose Bay. It's uh, 8.30 in the morning and we're uh, good breakfast in our bellies and we're just getting all geared up here. Pete's getting the old uh, KLR fired up, yes. warmed up. So uh, thoughts before we go, this is the longest stretch. This is the uh, this is our road of bones, as it were. Um, anyway, we'll uh, check in at the end of the day and see how happy and fresh we are. <laughs> suspect not. There comes our traveling companion, Oliver. Oliver. Oliver, what do you think? What are your thoughts on the day? Very good. It looks perfect. I mean, it's the perfect day to do 400 kilometers for nothing. So I'm just <laughs> for looking nothing. forward to it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's the last fill up before Goose. There is no other gas there. We've got an entire oil tanker of gas going in there, plus some spares. Penny's pit stop.
300 kilometers from Goose Bay. I don't know if you can see that according to the GPS. 306 from Goose. We just passed over the halfway mark for the whole trip, 2011 kilometers. And uh, should be in Goose around, uh, oh, I mark a 3330. Taking our time, doing about 70, 80 kilometers an hour. The road's really good. And uh, so far, it's almost like a concrete. Anyway. All right, what we're seeing here is the famous ridge line that comes from the graders going by on the Trans Labrador. And this is what gets you. So you get this nice firm road, and you get this shit in the middle that can grab your wheel. That's a small ridge. It's, yeah, it's not bad. For 180, 160 kilometers from Goose Bay. Holy uh, shit! Uh, uh, our pepper, our pepper, our bear spray just exploded in uh, Pete's uh, side case. So this is the first victim of the Trans Labrador. This was our bear spray that uh, has got a hole perked in the side. And you can see it's blown into the case. So I actually, I guess I technically I, I bear sprayed Oliver. <laughs> I'm shooting out the back, but look at that. And the, uh, looks like the stove may not be pepper sprayed. Yeah, it got pepper sprayed. I'm not even sure if that's gonna work. Now, we don't want this one to perf. Can you please say that again? <laughs> okay. So I had the pepper spray on my hands and I no, just No, 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 no. Say it the way you said it before. <laughs> I got the pepper spray on my dick. Ah! <laughs> and how'd you do that? I was urinating. After I had got the pepper spray on my hands. Dude. Whew. Man, it's warm down there. I was walking up thinking, why am I... Oh! So it burns when you pee? No. It just burns? It burns when I sit here. The wind keeps going faster now. Yes. We got hot dick Oxley. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's like, oh, you must get a face full of that. That would drop you. You're going to have to dip your weenie there in the, in the, in the water? I'm going to sit in the brook there for a second. Times like this where friendship only goes so far. And this isn't broke back biking, so the best I could do for Pete at the time was throw him some baby wipes and hope that would alleviate the burn. Great balls of fire or a hunk of burning love of another kind, Pete led the way to Goose Bay in a cloud of dust. So we're stopped about 75 kilometers from Goose Bay. Oliver's gonna top up the tank with some fuel. Pete's gonna dip his nuts into the river. The road conditions vastly improved from our last stop. And we're able to make some good time in about 80, 90 kilometers an hour, no problem. I bet you there's a couple salmon down in there. That was a bet man, I might be one sitting behind that rock. So this is typical Labrador bridge of the truck. I guess uh, Oliver must be out of gas. Mm -hmm. 
guess it's all sorted. Finally made it to Goose Bay. Yes, sir. 400 kilometers of gravel road, all said and done, and here we are. It was uh, an interesting day. It was, it was like skating with dull skates in a headwind uh, with six beer in you. That's how I would describe it. Uh, a few sketchy at times. There's was about a 100 weird. kilometer section in the middle between Port Hope and, and here that was pretty sketchy, marbly stuff. And, Lake, lake to dance around. And then it was good. It was, most of the road was pretty good. Yeah. Other, yeah. The last time was kind of interesting too because there's still a lot of construction. So we got to go by these huge uh, machines and all this kind of stuff. So it was very cool. Well yep. worth the ride. Long, was, a long day. It's a long day of concentrating on riding. Absolutely. So, time to go get a beer.